today we'll cover section 10.3 geometric sequences and series. Um, we discussed, we went over the introduction, which is going to lead us to a problem at the end of the section. And after that, uh, we were discussing how uh, the difference between a geometric and a arithmetic sequence is that with a uh, second, you add a common difference. Uh, this is my example of an arithmetic sequence, two, then you add two, you get four, you add two, you get six, and so on. Um, with a geometric sequence, you're going to be multiplying uh, the preceding term, the one that is before, by a fifth, that means that will remain the same, non-zero, that means it could be positive or negative, constant and that means it could be a number, right? So what we call that is the common ratio. So it will be a fifth, no, it will not change, non-zero, positive or negative, constant. So that's what we're going to do to every term. Um, so to determine the common ratio, what you will do is divide. For example, if you divide the second term, by the first one, you will get that the common ratio is 5. Now, it will be a good idea, just to review, actually, the, the sequence that I had here. How would I find the common difference? Remember, this one is subtract, right? So, you could take the second term minus the first term and then you will get a 2. Or you could do, let's say, the fourth term, 8, and subtract the third one, the preceding term, right? So with the geometric sequence, we will do the same thing, but dividing instead. So we can also, just to verify, take the third and the, I'm sorry, the fourth and the third. So you could say um, R will be 125 divided by 25, and that will give us the same thing, which is 5. So, just to make sure. Um, so now, if you guys could please find the ratio of the, the next one. Let me do the third one, just to make sure we're on the same track. Two, negative. negative 2, thank you. Why is the negative? Because uh, you divide the Okay, so negative over positive. So you'll just gotta be careful with your sign. So go ahead and finish the second and the fourth one, please. Okay. So the answer for the second one was two, and the fourth one it is negative one third. We verified that twice. Here's the second time. Now example one. Uh, write the first terms of the geometric sequence with the first term a uh, equal to 6. So a sub 1 will be 6. And the common ratio, it is 1 third. Well, we're going to get to a formula in a minute. So right now we're going to do one by one. So you start with 6. The next one will be 6 times 1 third. So that will be 6 thirds, which is 2. You. And then you take the next one, uh, which will be, so right now I'm using the recur recursive formula. So I'm, I will use the preceding term times one third. So that was two times one third, so two thirds. Then to get a sub four, we're going to use the preceding term, a sub 3, and multiply by 1 third. So that will be 2 thirds times 1 third, and that is 2 over 9. So can you guys get the next two? 1 over 27. 1? 1 over 181. 1 over 81. Yeah, like You could just take your time to get the answers. We'll wait. 
And make sure you, you write it down on your notes book because you know you might be understanding right now and then when the test comes, for some reason, that info is gone. I don't know, you, act, you, you all act like you get it in class. I still don't get why the test is not. That's good. I forget. Okay, so make sure you check your work, please. So remember the first term was given to us, six, and then two. If you multiply by one third, and then the third, two, nine. 227 until over 81. Do we agree with all of them? Yes. Any question about any of them? Yes. Uh, next one. So now we're going to get to and uh, the formula, how it comes, where it comes from. Um, what was the first term? It was with six, right? Yeah. And then it's two, two thirds. Um, so if you think about it, the ratio, here we, we do not multiply the ratio by anything, so I could even say one third to the power of zero. Um, right here I could say, uh, well, I, I just multiply one third one, and here, if I was considering a sub one, which is the, a sub one is the first term, not a sub two, like we did with the recursive formula. Um, it's like we multiply one third twice, so we could say one third squared, and so on. And so you can get the idea that the, depending on the subscript of the term, you're multiplying the ratio one time less, right? So if we're looking at the fourth term, we will multiply the ratio. Um, three times. And here, the fifth term, it will be four times, and so on. So, to get the general term, we have the formula here, and so you could get any term, uh, we refer to that to generalize as the n term, and so you could get it if you just use the first term, a sub 1, the first term, and then you use the common ratio, and you're going to multiply it n minus 1 times. And so that's why the exponent here, it is n minus 1. So if I have to get the term um, 52, I will take the first term and multiply it by the ratio. How many times to what power? 51. 51. And so that's how we're going to get any term at any time without having to go through the whole process. Okay. So right here we have the metric. Now we're going to use the shortcut. And we have the first term. It is a negative 4. And the common ratio is a negative 2. So we have to find the eighth term. So we're looking for a sub 8. That will be given by the first term times the common ratio to what power? Mm -hmm. So now we're going to substitute. That will be negative 4 times negative 2 to the power 7. So that will be negative 4 times, um, do you guys know what that is? I know it's going to be negative. Five is twenty two. And then four times one negative one twenty eight. So that will be positive. So make sure you guys pay attention to your signs. Negative times negative, so that will be positive. Uh, well, you might have had the same formula because, um, let me think about it. I will tell you why. Why?
while you are in this case it works, but it's not going to work all the time because you must follow our order of operation. You were lucky that it worked. It worked because, it didn't work? Well, I was thinking this was negative 2 to the power. No, I, no, Mr. Mr. I, I don't like Oh, you worked just fine. Okay. So, 512? Yeah, that's it. Okay. And keep in mind, you can enter this whole thing on the calculator. I'm okay with that as long as you do your, the correct substitution. Do we have a question? No? So, here we were giving the first term, we were giving the common ratio. And we use the formula that was here. Let's go to the next slide. Um, okay, so another problem. Yes, it is real. Uh, the table shows the population of the United States in 2000 and 2010 with estimates given, given by the Census Bureau for 2001 through 2009. Why do you guys think they're estimating here? Actually, I do. Okay, so anything you want to add to that, Sean? <laughs> Did you see all your work? Okay. I wasn't going to say anything besides that they do it every 10 years. Every 10 years, right? Okay. So, and then you said something about what in between? Oh, because, like, they only check, like, I think that they do a little more than guess. Maybe that's what they want you to think, but they're guessing. Think about all those forms they you fill out when you go get a license. When you enroll in school, when you apply for financial aid. So the example, it is uh, geometric and they are using um, a common ratio to estimate the growth. So what we're going to do first is show that the sequence is geometric. Now I already told you, but just verify, I might be wrong. So for A, how could we verify the geometric? Oh, well, first, the 2000 is going to be um, your independent variable. So, this is like your A sub, let's just use sub zero. Okay, we can start like that. That would be fine. Um, then the next one could be A sub one, and so on. So, what we could do. What is the difference between geometric and arithmetic? One multiplies, the other adds. Ratio. Ratio multiplies, and, and the other one adds, right? So, um, how can we verify if there is a common ratio? Divide, divide what? The, the, the second by the preceding. Okay, so Lorenzo, I want you to pick two numbers for me to divide to find the common ratio. Wow. Well, <laughs> we need one condition that they're next to each other. Okay. <laughs> Which one? <laughs> From this row. Yeah, 284. Okay, so in this case, we, we take uh, 8 sub 2 um, and divide it by the term that corresponds to a sub 1. Uh, so can you guys please do that on the calculator? Uh, Actually, Lorenzo, you do that on the oh, calculator. Okay. And then, um, Crystal, I want you to check from here to here. And then, um, Gabriel, I want you to check from here to here. So you will divide 292 over 289.3. We just need to check. Yeah. 
Round to the nearest uh, ten hundred uh, thousand. Okay, and then who had the last one? Population in what year? 2020. Okay. So year 2020. Uh, what subterm will, will that be? 2021. 19, 19, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20. I don't know. Let's see. If we consider these two numbers here. That will be zero, and that will be term one. So if it's that to me, that's one more, right? So if this is 20, this should be 21. Okay. Uh, now using the general form that we had, that was um, we're going to find the 21st term. So we're using 281.4 times the ratio uh, to the power what? 20. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, eight sub twenty. Yeah, eight sub twenty. Okay. Yeah. So many numbers. Okay. Um, do you guys have the answer? Uh, three thirty-six point six million. Mm -hmm. 
Say that again. 336.6. Okay. Do we all agree? Yes. Maybe. Okay. Um, now I want to mention something about this formula. If we take the formula that we were using for the general term, um, we could I could do the following. Does that remind you of any formula? No. Maybe you yeah. have seen Not really. yeah. Maybe in chapter three really. last semester? Yeah. Exponentials yeah. and logarithmic. Yeah, I was talking about table. Yeah, I was talking about table. No. Interest <laughs> interest. Oh come. Oh yeah. Compound yeah. interest. Yeah. Yes. So formula. Okay, what do you remember about? Principle. And then in parentheses, it's one plus, oh, one plus NRT. No, R R R R over T N to the power of N. N That's another one with NRT. Yes. That's another one with NRT, okay. <laughs> I remember it. Yes, there's C one with an RT. He is right. And that's for E. Yeah, yeah like, I remember something. Like, like continuously. No, it's not what I remember. I'll take it. Okay, I think we're going to start moving some people around. Now we're going to look at the sum of the first n term, so of a geometric sequence. Would you guys think that if we're just considering the first n term, will that sequence be infinite or finite? Finite. Uh, finite. Wait, 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 is this, is that like the signal? No, I didn't like the last Oh. Yeah, I think, I'm not sure we're going to get to something like that in this section, but in the following group one. Okay, uh, but instead of sigma addition, we're multiplying. Uh, so in this case, we're going to look at two types. Well, let me go back a little bit. In section 10.1, not 10.1, but 10.2, which was arithmetic sequences, we only look at the sum of a finite um, sequence. For example, uh, the first 100 terms or the first 20 terms. When we look at um, geometric, we're going to look at two formulas, one for finite and one for infinite. And I actually like to explain this one a lot. Um, but before we get to that, what, why would you guys say that with arithmetic, we only worry about the finite sequences? Why, why didn't I teach you a formula to add the infinite one? Because they're what? So they're infinite, they keep on going. So where, where do they go? To infinity. to infinity, yes, and beyond, probably. So that's why we don't really teach you a formula to add those, because it's just kind of like a little crazy. However, other sequences that we cover a little bit in 10.1, those could still be added if they're infinite, because... Um, that will be the case when you have alternating signs. Because those don't go don't grow to infinity. And remember I told you you're gonna see this in Cal two, calculus two. Some of you might not get there or have to take it. Uh, so but if you do that it's actually very important. Okay. So moving on, let's go back to geometric, what we should be learning right now. So we're going to focus right now on the finite sequence. So in this case, we want to add the first 18 terms of a geometric sequence. So to add the first 
18, we're going to use this formula here. So let me just write it again. Uh, do you guys think I will let you use this formula on the test? Oh, yes. No. Yes. No. You're a great Well, the next test is take home. So obviously, oh, yeah. you can use it. <laughs> 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 okay. So, uh, we we need the what do we need to be able to use this formula? What do we need, Genesis? Genesis, are you one of those students? Sorry, it's okay. Oh, oh, oh! Oh, that's the table back there. Some fine now. Look, they're fine. They're on the task. Okay. All right. Give me. Uh, what do we need to use the formula? The first term. Yeah. What else do I need? Um. The by how much? Okay. How do we call that? The. It starts with an R. Ratio. Common ratio. Which uh -huh. is. Do we know it? Negative four. Negative four. How do we know it? That someone other than Genesis. Let's see, Jose. Let's see, Jose. Jose. So you divide negative eight by two, and so that will give you negative four. Now, I just want to confirm that that is correct. So, how? What else could I divide, Adelina? Okay, and so that also gives me negative 4, so we're good. That is the common ratio. Now, we're going to move on here, substitute our term, and use the formula. So we need the first term. First term, that is 2, thank you. And then we're going to need 1 minus the common ratio, which was negative 4. Now, to what exponent do I need that common ratio to be? 18. 18. 17. 17. 17. No, actually, I see N. Oh. Mm -hmm. And I was just using the formula for that one. Okay, I used to know how to do that one when I was like, yeah, I'm so good at that. And I didn't study it. Okay. I mean, I didn't, like, work the problem. Okay, and, oh, you don't have to say anything. It's okay, I don't care. Uh, so then on the bottom, we need 1 minus, what? What is the common ratio? Negative 4. Should, is, is this okay? No. no. What? What, 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 what? what? It should be 1 plus 4, right? But that comes after you realize that the common ratio is negative, right? Now, on your take-home exam, guys, I am going to be so picky when I grade those exams because you are going to have, like, time at home, time to compare. And so if you do something wrong, like, I'm not going to give you a partial credit. This is going to be wrong because I hate giving partial credit. I hate it. That's what takes most of my time. So, this will be 2, 1. Should I change this to a plus? Yeah. No. Why not? No, because you have to do that. Because the exponent, right? So, I cannot say negative times negative because before that, I need to consider what? the negative 4. No. no Actually, we need to multiply that to the power 18 negative 4. And that is going to turn to a positive number. Could you guys tell me what that number is? I was going to say, since it's a 1 right there, it's going to be the same thing even if you multiply. It's like 2 It's a big number. So it's going to be 2 times 1. It's going to be 2 times 1. So it's going to be the same thing. Are you sure, Miss? That's like really big number. Look out. You know how it's a 1? Negative 4 to the power 18? That's a really big number. Is that right? Yeah. No, uh, I could assure you that it will not be the same. So if you do this, Sean, sit down. Sit down. 
<laughs> if you were to do that, um, if you do that positive and then you keep like a 4 to the power 18, then what you get from here will be positive. But if we do the other way, oh, oh, okay, I see. we will get um, 1. I was thinking about when you multiply, you know, like and then something really basic. Yeah. Uh, so that one, since will be bigger than one, we're going to get something negative at the end. So yes, they are different. And but but what it's important to remember your middle school teachers who taught you the order of operations, right? Yes. yes? And I and, and I think you guys know that. So exponents go before multiplication. Now, um, what is just negative four to the power eighteen? Is that too big that your calculator can't uh, compute it? No, it is. Oh yeah, I don't think I can see. Oh, that's wrong. You have to put the four and the negative in parentheses. No, 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 no. Negative four to the power two is the same as negative 1 times 4 times 4, which is negative 16. Negative 4 in parentheses to the power 2 is negative 4 times negative 4, which is positive 16. So yes, it does matter where you put that negative, inside or outside. We use it outside or inside? It's inside. I'm, a, I'm only asking you guys for the part that is here. It's not the semester, stop saying that. I do believe I have a bachelor's and a master's in math, and I know my exponents. So it's not the same. It is actually, you can see it yourself. Oh! The same thing is positive. Uh, actually, <laughs> let, me, let me correct it. That is not the same thing. It's a band, it's a massive difference. teach it to you guys. It's not the same. Uh, so that is negative six eight seven one nine four seven six seven three five over five. Okay. Now do it your way, Sean, and then tell me if you get the same at the end. No, 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 no. I believe because I mean, I I think I studied math for like six years. I think, if I'm correct. And I did graduate with honors, though. I didn't just get C's or D. I graduated with honors. We'll take a break in a minute. Are you okay? Are you okay? <laughs> Who's raising his hand? Yeah, for like five minutes, he's been yeah. I was like, this I'm sorry. Is <laughs> Just go. Is it an emergency? Go, go. Take care of yourself. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Do we have an answer, please? I'm ready to move on. Negative two, seven, four, two, eight. Somebody get it up. Nine, zero, six, nine. Four. Oh. I need to verify these right Okay, please go ahead. Uh, now, the good news is that you don't need to do all that step by step because I don't want you to get, sometimes when I grade your exams, like you start right and then you get lost somewhere in between. So I think we are at a level, well, you should be at a level that you could, um, you don't even know where I'm going to say it, you're saying agree. You are at a level where you could substitute, like here, and then enter the whole thing in your calculator. 
However, you have to make sure that it is done correctly. So, uh, let's see, how many slides do we have? Well, the next ones are not that long. Let's see. So let me show you how you will enter this on your calculator. Just so you we're on the same page. You all have a calculator, right? Yes? So I want to see you all typing on your calculator. Even if you're just typing random numbers. <laughs> Which will be a complete waste of your time. I want you to please try so that you know exactly what I'm talking about. So the easiest thing is to get, to get the fraction tool. <laughs> I just control the device. What well, was that control button? Control device. Control device? That's the fraction tool? Yeah. Okay. Yes. So, control device. That is so cool. So then we have a two and then parentheses. Uh, where's the parentheses? It's like the last. Oh, okay. So you're going to enter. I hear a lot of you talking. Please stop now. Stop. Just stop. So you're going to enter one. One minus, uh, minus, when I say minus, I'm referring, do you guys see what is red on the screen? Yeah. The one next to, to the positive sign. So then um, you open parentheses again, and now you want to enter negative 4, which was the common ratio. However, I'm not saying minus, I'm saying negative 4. So you're going to use that little negative sign, the one below number 3. Then you enter 4. Then uh, you close parentheses, and then you enter the exponent that is only going to the negative 4. So that will be 18. And then we can move to the denominator, and so that will be 1 minus, notice I'm using the big minus, and then parentheses, parentheses uh, negative 4. Do you guys see the difference? <laughs> yeah, you could just put a five. Yeah, that would be a lot easier. Yes. Okay. And so, is that the same answer we have? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So good job, Ezekiel. Uh, let's move on to example five, and then uh, uh, do you guys need to go take a break? Yeah. Okay. So let's go take a break uh, of three minutes. I really don't want to have to go and tell you to come back. Okay. So please. Uh, check your time on your cell phone. 2.09, so I need you here at 2.12. Okay, so we're recording now. Okay, example 5. So we're going to find the sum. So we see again the summation notation. So the lower limit uh, will be 1 and the upper limit is the 10. That means we're going to go from the 8 sub 1 a sub 2 all the way to the a sub 10, correct? And then, of course, we're going to add them because that's what we're saying here. Um, so, of course, we can use the formula. So that will be 6 times 2. And I'm sorry, this should be a, an exponent. 2 to the power i. So this will be 2 to the power 1 plus 6 times 2 to the power 2, plus 6 to 2 to the power 3, plus um, so on, right? 6 to the power 2 times 10. Now, how many of you do uh, know that your calculator can do that for you? I do. Wow, genius. Okay, so, so I'm going to teach you how. So, please, all of you, try it, because I'm going to pick one person to tell me the answer. So, you're going to go to Menu, and then Calculate. I'm sure there's a better way, but 
Yes. And then some. Oh, oh, oh. 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 And then you guys and it was there. Oh, I didn't yeah. even know. Oh, that was a lot easier. Okay, so let's go for. I think you could go for with any variable. Like, like you know how if you put x in there, no, it's just no. like you need a variable. Like you need to input a variable. No, Mr. Test, I check here. I put i in there. Okay, I will use this one here. So I'll just see i is equal to one. So I think you guys can do that, right? So the upper limit is ten. Okay. So I gave you guys the answer. Twelve thousand two hundred seven. Oh, next problem. All right. Uh, no, we have here. Who would like to read that problem? Okay, go ahead. One worker is paid twenty thousand dollars per year. What is yeah, what is this person's total lifetime salary over the thirty years period? Okay. So we're going to add and here we see that formula again that one um the principal times one plus r to the power what if n was just one? What would this formula turn into? If n was equal to one one plus r to the power, to the power. So that's the same formula that you guys are seeing here. Now, um, except one thing that if you're talking about year four, you guys notice the exponent is the three. Mm -hmm. So that will be an n minus one. So we're going to use a formula from the previous slide. So that one stays the first term times 1 minus the ratio to the power n divided by 1 minus the ratio. Yeah, are we okay? So that's the formula that we had just like before. So we have here. The first term is equal to 20,000, and then the ratio is equal to what, guys? What's the ratio? Uh, 1.0. Yeah. Is it 1.05 or 0.05? It's 4.05. How do we know? No, it's just fine. What is that, Miguel? Do you miss Lima? No, it's, it's, it's 1.0. Okay, I think that's. So I think it's 1.05 because that salary plus the other question. Correct. Yes, it is 1.05 because it is the salary plus the 0 0.05. What will happen if I say my ratio is 0 0.05? Then you're just adding to 20,000. I'm just adding what? Well, you're adding 0.5 of 20,000, not adding it to. So will my sequence increase or decrease? Yeah. Uh, I want Olaf to tell me. <laughs> Why do you guys tell him? Like, you guys think I can't see? What is it? Would it increase or decrease if I was to consider my ratio 0.05? Yes, it will decrease. So yes, for sure it is one plus one point zero five. You guys notice, I mean, why would you take a job that pays you less every year, right? Okay. 
Well, <laughs> let's hope that not, that not, does not happen to you. Um, okay, uh, so I want you guys to tell me the answer. What will be his total, total salary in a 30-year period? In 30 years. If you were to add, your lower limit will be a 1 and your upper limit will be 30. And your formula is actually um, what you see here. So it will be, if you want to enter it on the calculator, it will be the first year, 20,000, times 1 minus, now you guys told me the ratio is 1.05 to the power, in this case, will be I, because that's how I'm labeling my limit or my counter. over 1 minus 1.05. Don't tell me it's a lot, because all you have to do is type it on the calculator. Oh, is that? Well, I hope so. It's over 30 years. How, how much? Well, wait, wait, wait. I want to pick someone. Randomly. Oh, <laughs> But is it for the right funds? You guys will fresh. Okay, this is not economic. Alexis Romero. <laughs> Come on, Alexis. Well, it's only alive because, I mean, he's not spending any of the money. Oh, yeah, considering he's not spending it. Okay, what do we have? What's the name of this person? No name? Is this person going to make over a million over 30 years? No. His name is Bob? His name is Bob? Oh. <laughs> no, no, no. Over 20 years, when your salary will double. They're not taking any kids. 20 years, your salary will double. I mean, yeah, Ms. Perfect. Okay. Um. <laughs> Alexis? No? You didn't get that? I could be wrong. What do you get? I think I'm wrong. I got a negative. Oh, yeah. Okay, we'll make over. We don't want a negative spell. Okay, I could be wrong. Look at it. Can you want a different look? Yeah, I mean, right. Oh, no, I think that was like one of the Those are the two first ones. <laughs> Okay, let me check the book. Because on my notes I have that. Okay, so I am correct. Really? Yes. What? I don't know. We didn't. Okay, so we'll check it next class.